Phase three. So we've done the do now. We've done the exposition. Phase three of your lesson is modeling. Tell us about this. And I, I'll warn you now, I have a million questions already before you've even said anything here. So this, this, could, this could be a long one. Right, let's go for modeling. Yeah, do some modeling and then move on. What questions did you get? Um, so this, this particular lesson was, was I did example problem. Well, I didn't do it in the same way that you would talk about some problem pair, but I had two questions that, 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 that were side by side, the board was, was split in half. This in general would just be lots of blank space and then a question that, that I would be asking, uh, that I would be doing myself. It's my chance to model explicitly the formal process that we're doing today. Um, it's me doing it, it's, it's whatever you want to call it, explicit instruction, you know, it, it's me. Kids are quiet, they're, they're, they're looking, looking at, at the front. In, in this case, I chose two, two questions um, that I wanted a bit of similarity with and a bit of difference with um, to, to draw some, some comparisons. So this is three brackets x plus five is on the left-hand side, and then three brackets two x minus five is on the right-hand side. So the x has become two x, the plus has become, become subtract. Um, and that's a careful consideration of how much change you want to have, mm. because arguably all of these questions today are a brackets B plus C. Mm, mm. So I could have just done that. You can keep them all as positive. Mm. You can keep them all as, and that's going to depend on you knowing the class and, uh, and, and how much difference you, you want to have. Um, and then so on the left hand side, I drew my, my grid. I want my three here, my X, my plus five there, really insisting on writing the plus five because of how important it's going to be with the, with the minus five, the negative five later on. Um, wrote my answers, my, my 3x and my plus 15, again plus 15, not 15, into the, the two parts of my area model, and then wrote my answer 3x plus 15 underneath. Throughout that, um, I think I was talking, maybe I shouldn't have been, um, but I was going through, or maybe I, I can't fully remember, I might have said like watch this and then done an A stage and then narrated it at another stage, then, then narrated it. I can't quite remember. Um, I, I, I did that, and then on the right-hand side, um, I said, right, that, that, that's, that, that's that question done. I'm gonna do a very similar question now. I want you to be thinking, what on earth is this gonna look like? What do you think is gonna happen? Uh, and then when it's up, the steps are almost side by side on the, on the board so they can see comparable bits and, and comparable differences. Um, and I, I modeled that to them. I didn't ask them at the end any reflections, what did they notice, all those things, because that's that's coming. This was just shut up and watch. Mm. Don't take any notes. I think if you take notes, you you don't focus on anything. You don't focus on what you're writing. You're just copying, and you don't focus on, on what on what I'm doing either. So it was just watch watch this. The, the dramatic pause, right? I like it. <laughs> right, strap yourselves in. Here come the questions. So first. I mean, you've thrown me straight away there. So I thought when you're splitting the board in two, you were doing one on the left and the kids were doing one on the right, but you're doing both of these. Is, is that right? Yeah. What, yeah, sometimes I see, I, I know what's coming. I know that all my kids are going to be on their mini whiteboard answering a question for me. I don't need to do one together or I ask one or two or three kids because if you've not understood the first time, you've got to try and track a few different kids contributing ideas around the classroom. I think that is so confusing. Um, kids aren't good at explaining themselves. This is the first time they've seen it. I don't want them doing my job at, at, at this point. So I'm doing both of them. Yeah, they're not, they're not contributing at okay, all. Okay, so this is the worst thing you can say is like, I would do it like this or whatever, but I, I'm intrigued as, yeah, to the, the, the kind of, yeah, the, the differences here. So could, would you be able to tell me what's coming I know this is kind of jumping ahead, but it'll be important to put this in context. What's coming after this slide? Do, do the kids do a couple of examples based on what you've done? Just so I know where, so, where so we're what's going. Coming, yeah, go on. Yeah, what's coming next is a, on a mini whiteboard, the question is, draw a grid which you could use to represent two brackets X plus seven. Right, okay. It's not expand yeah. it, it's not, it's not multiply anything, it's what grid would satisfy this. Okay, right. That's what's coming right, next. Right, this is interesting. So... I think what I would do, and I'm intrigued as to the similarities and differences with the expanding 
uh, brackets. I too would have two examples. Um, I do them both on the left hand side because um, I think I have enough space there with the left hand side of the board with, 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 with these two. I'd make them related to each other. So I might do something like, what was your first one, Craig? Your uh, three x three brackets x plus five. Right. So I might have three brackets x plus five, and then below it, three brackets five minus x. Just do a little tweak to that one to draw kids' attention to what's changed and what impact it has on the answer. I do exactly the same as you. I would model it. I'd take full control, um, empty hands, eyes on me. Don't you dare take a note. Anything like that. Just watch me. We'll talk about the kind of silence and, and all that in a second. But then I would then have the follow-up questions that the kids, I was then asking the kids to do to check their understanding, the whiteboard ones you do, on the right-hand side, so they've got mine to kind of compare against. What what would be the argument for kind of removing yours from view? Is it because it's a more robust check for understanding or, yeah? Well, yeah, that, and it might be the case that when you do the first check, sometimes you might want that, but I, I want to make sure by the end of it, they don't need that level of scaffolding mm. to do the question accurately. Mm. Um, and, and this is this is the phase of the lesson, which is me preparing for the unplannable yes. with, with, what, with what comes next. I'm hoping that by breaking down the process so much into right, draw a grid, which could represent this, show me. I can fix that if it needs fixing. Next question, start filling in that grid. What would the two areas be? How would we represent them? Show me. And I I think that this particular task is not cognitively demanding enough that I need to give them a complete example to compare it mm -hmm. to. Partly because it's year 11, they've seen it before. Partly because there's, by breaking it down in the next step, that, wasn't, that wouldn't necessarily be, be the case. That's not to say that I would never do that. I'm just saying for this particular lesson, this is that macro versus micro. Thing here for this particular content i'm not i'm not doing that god this is this is craig this is fascinating this so let me ask you this what's the argument so i really like the fact you're breaking it down because a mistake i've made many times in the past is you assume that expanding a single bracket is a relatively straightforward process when of course we know there's it's actually you know four or five kind of discrete steps that if you're not secure on it it's actually potentially cognitively demanding so what's the rationale for kind of showing them it all in one go and then breaking it down versus breaking it down, checking at each stage as you're doing anyway, and then putting it all together at the end. Why, why show them it from start to finish? Um, because I judged from my experience that they would be able to cope with it. That isn't, again, the case for every um, topic. If I think about iteration. I wouldn't do the full thing. We'd, we'd practice rearranging the equation, first of all, for example. But I, I judge that they would be able to do but, it. But let from... me play devil's advocate. Then why break it down then? Why, why not just go from you doing one to them doing one from start to finish? Uh, I judge that they would be able to do it broken down with no extra help. Uh, and it does, it does two things, that bit by bit. One is um, every step's really, really achievable. So it's more chance to add some praise on. If I ask them to do it all at once and they get it wrong, I have no idea yeah. what's gone yeah. wrong necessarily. So I can I can be really pinpoint with my diagnosis here. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that's why. I'm all in favor of the breaking down. I'm just intrigued. And again, it's something I'd not thought of. If I'm ever gonna break something down, I'll do all the breaking down first and the kids will never see the complete process until we've done all the breaking down uh, and the checks out, and then we put it together at the end. I'm just intrigued why it's being put together well, at the start. Well, let me give you one more reason then for this particular yeah, yeah. topic, why I am breaking down this much, is because if I had asked the students to expand, in this particular question, the first one is, is two brackets x plus seven, yeah. half of them wouldn't have used a grid. Yeah. Now I need them to use the grid because when things get to negatives and the coefficients get more complicated and when they do double yep. brackets, I need them to use that. By saying, draw the grid, I'm forcing them to use the model that I know they might not even need. So, I'm, but I need them to be au okay with it because of I know what's coming later in their curriculum and how difficult the questions are going to become later. 
So I'm forcing them to use the grid method and understand the mechanics of it rather than jumping straight to an answer, which is correct. If I said expands to brackets x plus seven, and they said two x plus 14, I can't say you're wrong. I'm forcing them to use the model I want them to. Listen, I'm going to push you one more little bit on this, Craig, and it's only because you, you, you give such well thought through answers, and I'm, I'm just intrigued to get into your mind here. Let's think worse. Let's, let's go back 20 principles before. Let's assume kind of the worst, right? So let's yeah. say we've got kids, they're lacking confidence. You, you show them this example from start to finish. Well, two examples, in fact, of expanding these brackets. And they look at that and think, what is that? And they've, you, they've gone, mm. you've lost them. See, it's, it's a yeah. complex thing. There's so many steps, they can't follow it through. And then you say, well, it's okay, I'm going to break it down for you. But you're playing catch up there. You've got to then get them back on board versus you say, right, in five minutes time, I'm going to show you something from start to finish. Before we do that, I'm going to show you and we're going to learn each of the individual components so that by the time I show it you, you're going to be so fluent yeah. and familiar in everything. All your attention then goes on how these things fit together versus look, trying to fit unfamiliar things together. So I'm just, yeah, I'm, and again, I appreciate it's only going to take like a minute or whatever for you to go through it, but I'm just yeah. intrigued. If you're going to break it down anyway, why show them the thing from start to finish in the first place? I think the final point then would be that if we broke it down as draw the grid, draw the grid, draw the grid, yeah. what's the area, what's the area, what's the area, I'm towing that fine line between patronising or, or them feeling patronised. There needs to be an adequate level of challenge that they feel like it's worth them putting the time and effort into. And I, I felt like for this topic, this was that right level of challenge. Yeah. It was on the cusp of what they could do, and maybe some couldn't. Yeah. And when I when they they showed me the grid, we said, right, it should be should be this. If you haven't got this, now draw this grid, because it's going to use the same numbers for the next part of this question. So it, I don't think I would have lost anyone because the first question is draw a grid. And if they can't do it, and they can think mm. we go through. Okay, it needs to be this because of this, 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 and this. If you haven't got that, now draw the grid. Draw the grid yeah. now. And we need that because it, the next question is going to be. You know, we're going to be use, using that grid. Um, yeah, I think that's maybe it. Maybe tying that fine line between them feeling patronised, like, why is it making us do this? Right, because I can okay. do all this work. Um, Interesting. Interesting. Know. Okay, I like this. And um, final question, if that's okay, just on, on this phase. So you mentioned, you were kind of alluded to kind of silence and talking and so on. And again, listeners may know I have a kind of definite way of, of doing work to examples. And there are two versions of it. And I'm just intrigued... Again, your take on either these, Craig, or what you've tried and so on. And we'll use the, the kind of concrete example of, of expanding single brackets. So option one, and this will depend on like some of the considerations you've talked about, my knowledge of the class, how complex I think this is relative to their understanding and so on. Option one is I will do an entire example in silence or maybe even two in those two examples entirely in silence. And during that, kids will have empty hands watching me, no notes. I'll be gesturing. I'll be pausing. I'll have trained the kids that every time I pause or do a signal, it's their cue to ask themselves, what's he just done? What's he going to do next? To think it through. At the end of that silent modeling, I'll give them an opportunity, very similar to what you've uh, talked about before, to reflect themselves, make, make some notes, discuss with their partner, perhaps, and so on. Or what I may do is break it up. So I'll say, okay, watch me. And I'll do a line in silence. And then I'll pause. And then I'll either draw their attention, I'll either explain what I did, or I'll ask a question, where did that five come from, or whatever it may be, and then do another line in silence. I just think at least some aspect of silence in works examples is so powerful to draw kids' attention, really focus it in. So I just wondered if you could just, and again, I know you've kind of answered this already, but what role does silence, if at all, play in your modelling? Would you ever do it all in silence, or are you a kind of line by line, or sometimes you never have silence? Where does it fit in? Uh yeah, I, I would sometimes do it in silence. I would sometimes do it line by line. I would sometimes, I, I try to be really economical with, with my language. Yeah. Um, and sometimes if I realize that I've spoken through something whilst also modeling it, we'll just pause and get students to look at it for, for a little bit. It reminds me once I was I was training someone, but I suggested that they do part of the lesson in silence and they misheard me. They taught an entire lesson without talking. Wow. And I didn't want to interrupt them. <laughs> Ended up going quite well, um, but 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 yes, like, like we know that that if students are trying to read something whilst also trying to 
listen to something, it it's very much the same process. This was a very visual mm. model. So there might not have been that much contradiction in, in yeah. this in this instance. Um, but yeah, silence and, and an economy of language really, really, really important. Amazing.